Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we are talking about abscesses and we're also talking about CL. Um, I know a lot of you have questions about CL and abscesses in general and we're going to be covering how to treat um, and evacuate an abscess on a sheep or a goat. So if you have been looking for information based on CL and abscesses in general, you are in the right place. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, so CL, abscesses. Uh, I know this just scares the heck out of a lot of you, um, and it shouldn't, it doesn't need to anymore. Once upon a time, um, you know, it was some pretty scary stuff, especially with CL. Um, but now we have vaccines for CL, and we'll get to that later on in the program. So make sure you stick around until after we treat the animal. Um, most abscesses that you're going to find in sheep and goats are just caused by scrapes, bumps, bruises, uh, getting stuck with a piece of straw, getting stuck with a thorn, um, something like that. Not a whole lot that you need to worry about. Um, but I understand for those of you that want to make sure that it's not CL, um, if you haven't experienced CL yet on your farm, uh, you will. Um, you can get it from clippers, you can get it from horse flies, you can get it from other infected animals, you can get it from animals at the show barn. Um, all kinds of ways that you can get it. Some animals show it, some animals don't. The only way to really know is to test them for it. The good news is, is there is a vaccine uh, that's highly effective. We use it here, we vaccinate all of our animals. Um, so we know that they don't have CL. Now, uh, there's this weird school of thought uh, from individuals that say, well, I don't, I don't wanna vaccinate my animals against CL. And the reason that they don't wanna vaccinate their animals against CL, their thought process is, is once you vaccinate them, they then carry the antibodies for it. And if they're tested, they're going to pop positive. So people are scared to death that they're gonna sell an animal to someone they're gonna get it tested for CL and it's gonna show a positive and then um, they're gonna be accused of having CL on their farm. Look, that's a silly reason not to vaccinate your animals. Um, CL is a degenerative uh, disease that settles in the lymph system, settles in the lymph nodes. It can settle in the lungs and in the organs, causes pus-filled nodules um, that can be detrimental to the health of your animal. So it is well worth your time and effort to simply vaccinate uh, your animals against it. Um, to worry about your animals testing positive for it is a silly reason not um, to vaccinate. So, you know, if you run a steady vaccination program to where you just tell your customers, hey, they've been vaccinated against it. If you test them, they're going to test positive. I don't see why anybody would worry about that. We definitely don't worry about that here. There are two different vaccines, one for sheep, one for goats, um, very easily administered. Uh, you can find these uh, in the description listed below. Make sure you get the right one for your right type of animal. Um, it's simply two subcutaneous injections given 14 days apart. Um, so again, if you have not vaccinated your animals against CL, just do so. Um, it is uh, very easy to do. This is a bacteria that can transfer to people. Um, so we want you to be extremely careful when you're treating your animals um, and when you're performing any, um, performing any procedures such as the ones that we're performing today. So uh, this goat is not one of our goats. It is actually a lender goat we're getting from someone uh, to help show you uh, what's going on in the procedure and how it's done. So just for you to keep that in mind, we are gonna vaccinate her against CL after the fact. Um, the placement of the, of the abscess is highly suspect. It's in the front shoulder, um, and that is in the lymph node area that leads us to believe that it could possibly be CL. With that being said, supplies. There's a few supplies that you're going to need. You can get all of these online um, with the exception of one that we'll talk about here in a moment. So I have my Catron spray. Um, Catron spray is great for flies. We wanna have this to spray after the fact. You're going to need a scalpel. Um, you can pick these up at Tractor Supply. Um, anywhere uh, that sells veterinary supplies. I have a 50-50 mixture here of hydrogen peroxide and iodine that we're gonna use to flush uh, when we're done. And I'm making quite a mess here. As you can see, I've been cleaning up as we go. Um, I have antibiotics. This is five milliliters of LA-200. 
And this is lidocaine. Um, you are going to have to contact your veterinarian to get lidocaine. I have about one and a half mLs of lidocaine that I'm going to use to inject um, just to save her from a little bit of ache and pain when I actually make my incision. Uh, the other thing, you can get these online. Um, I pick mine up from my vet. Um, this is a swab collection um, tube that you can actually swab uh, the pus that's coming out of the wound and verify if it is or is not CL. You're going to always want to have lots of rags. And then I like to purchase these online. These are Santa Claus. Um, it's just a cleaning cloth. It's like a giant uh, alcohol wipe and works really good to clean off the site before we actually do any incision work. Um, I have a pair of gloves. I have more towels and I have a container that I'm going to try to at least squeeze uh, some of the pus into this container. Um, you want to be as clean as possible. If it is CO, it can live on the ground for a long period of time. Um, so you're going to want to do this in an area where you don't normally have animals. Um, concrete works great because then you can clean it up with a bleach and water solution afterwards. And then of course we want to make sure that we have a halter. You're definitely going to want to utilize a helper uh, for this when you're doing it. Um, I would highly recommend that you do not attempt to do this on your own. Remember safety first when you're using your needles and your scalpel. Uh, be cautious that you don't cut yourself or cut your buddy. Um, and you're going to have to be somewhat aggressive with the animal um, to make your incision. You have to make the incision deep, uh, deep enough to get into the pocket of where the pus is at. Um, so if you're not handy uh, and if you don't know what you're doing, this is one of those jobs that you're far better off having a veterinarian do for you. Uh, with that being said, let's head into the shop really quick and take a look at kind of the anatomy of one of these um, uh, of, of one of these abscesses before we actually head out to the field and do our work. All right, so when we're looking at the abscess itself, uh, we're actually going to have a lump and this, rec this is actually the, the skin. And then the abscess is going to be kind of encapsulated in a membrane down in the tissue. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to make an incision that has to go all the way down in there. Um, and then I'm manually going to apply pressure, just kind of like you're squeezing a zit. Um, and I'm going to squeeze it so I get this pus that's in here is going to hopefully come out to where I can um, get everything out of here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iodine and my um, hydrogen peroxide flush and flush this out to clean it. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is extremely uh, bactericidal. Anything that's in there, it's going to kill it. Um, so, and then we're actually going to leave it open. We're going to segregate the goat um, so she can't get anyone else um, infected or sick. Um, and, and that's going to be it. We're going to let it heal up on its own. Um, so again, you know, we're going to go through this when we get out into the field, but you know, we want to clean the area very well. We want to make sure that we're gloved up. Um, we want to make sure that we're not doing this in an area where other animals are going to get exposed to it. Um, back in the day, what they used to recommend was, um, they would recommend actually doing an injection of formaldehyde. Um, and some, some people did this if, if this was here, um, essentially, and this is our needle, we would uh, take formaldehyde and inject it inside here, um, or, or formalin, you may have heard it referred to as formalin, um, and we would inject this in here, and it actually kills everything, and it would become uh, dead, and this whole thing would become dead, and eventually the lesion would just fall off. I am not a huge fan of that. If you accidentally uh, stuck your needle somewhere over here or too far down, um, it basically kills tissue. Um, and there's better options out there uh, to use today. This was before we had um, uh, vaccines and things like that for, for this. So this is kind of old school um, train of thought. The best thing to do now is to open them up and drain them. Most of the time, again, and I know we've already mentioned this, but most of the time, um, it's not CL. Most of the time it's just an abscess. Um, they got poked with something, they got a burr in there, or a, they got stuck with something, um, and that's what it is. But um, it's always worth checking um, and always worth following up with your veterinarian about. All right, so really quick, um, before we go out, I just want to show you these are the two vaccines that you use 
um, for CL. Um, this is the one that you use for sheep, and I will include this in the video um, down in the description below. This one, the directions say to inject two milliliters subcutaneously, that means under the skin, um, in the armpit, um, and repeat a full two ml dose four weeks later in the opposite armpit, um, and then to give a booster every year. Um, this is the one for goats. A little bit different in this one. This one is uh, one ml in the side of the neck, and to follow up um, with one ml on the opposite side of the neck 14 days later. So four weeks apart, two weeks apart, two ml, one ml. Again, these two are not interchangeable. Um, so make sure you check out in the description below if you're going to be vaccinated for CL, which we highly recommend that you do. Um, go ahead and. Uh, make sure you give the right one uh, for a sheep or for a goat. Uh, questions that you may have, um, you can go ahead and start to vaccinate after about six months of age. Um, if you have an adult that hasn't been vaccinated, go ahead and vaccinate them. If you get a sheep or a goat that seems to have CL, um, it is not too late. You can go ahead and give the vaccination after uh, signs and symptoms of CL, um, and it will be effective for um, future time periods as well. So won't, won't keep them from getting it if they've already got it, um, but uh, it's been shown that this will keep um, outbreaks from reoccurring. So with that, uh, let's head out to the pasture. All right, so here's our goat. And as you can see, we've got this abscess that's going on right here. Um, when I look at it, I don't see any obvious wounds, um, which leads me to believe that it could be CL. Um, again, I don't know. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off with my wipe. And as you can see, I've got my helper and my helper is going to help me. Um, so I'm just going to clean this whole area off. This whole abscess is movable. Um, it doesn't really necessarily feel like it's attached to anything. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean her off. Again, make sure you wear your gloves and you keep as clean as possible. Make sure you really get down into uh, the skin and clean that skin off. Now, you're going to want to make your incision down towards the bottom of that abscess so it can naturally drain out. You're not going to want to make your incision up high because if you do, um, it's not going to want to drain naturally. So uh, I am cleaning this off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my injection of lidocaine. Okay, so I've got my lidocaine. I'm going to give her a small injection. In the side of the abscess, I'm going to give her another small injection in the other side. Okay. Okay, now that that is done, it is time to make, let's keep her back in that way. It's time to make our incision. I've got my cup handy. I've got my rags and I have my scalpel. Again, very, very, very sharp. So you're gonna wanna be very, very careful. And I'm gonna make my incision straight up and down about halfway in. I'm just gonna stick my point in and I'm gonna cut down. So and I'm just making my incision straight up and down until I can feel that I am inside of the abscess. Again, making sure that I don't cut myself. Be cautious, take your time. All right, so now that we are in there and I've made my incision, I'm gonna take my cup, hold it underneath, and I'm gonna squeeze this abscess. You 
you can see what we've got there. I want to push as much of this as I can and it, I can feel it now with my fingers. It feels like almost like an empty balloon. Okay, so that is out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iodine and my hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to place this up inside and inject it. And that's going to burn her, but you can see how it's foaming and flushing, and that's going to help to kill anything that's inside of there. And it just feels like an empty pocket now. I have a small incision site you can see right there. We're going to leave that. Clean her off as well as I can. This will heal on its own. Next thing I'm going to do is give an injection, a five milliliter subcutaneous injection of LA-200 just to fight off any kind of an infection she may have gotten due to our work that we did today. All done. And the very last thing that I am going to do on her is to spray the wound site with Catron. That will keep any flies or anything that we don't want from settling there. All right, now this is where our sample comes into hand. You're going to want to take the lid off of your sample container. Scoop up some of this stuff on your swab. Stick your swab down in your container. It, it snaps off just like that. Reattach it. And you're going to mark it with uh, today's date, um, the animal's tag number, and where you took the specimen from. And you can take this to your veterinarian and they will run the sample for you and tell you what you got. As far as this is concerned, burn it. Everything that you've got here, your rags and everything else that you have, go ahead and burn it. Um, so she's going to be segregated off to herself in a hard floored pen or in a pen that she can keep clean um, for about three to four weeks until we're sure that that abscess has uh, completely healed up and it's not draining anymore. Um, you don't need to be as cautious if all of your animals have been uh, vaccinated against CL. Um, but if they haven't been and you run into something like this, very, 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 very cautious biosecurity. You want to make sure you don't spread this to anyone else. Um, while I have her, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick check. Her eyelids are nice and pink. Uh, she looks pretty good. So that is it in a nutshell. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, let us know. Um, hopefully this was helpful and useful to you. I'm Tim from Lonessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.